Hey y'all, I'm back with my review for Ready to Love Season 6, Episode 8. Alright, let's get into it. So, in this episode, it was the guy's turn to introduce the ladies to their best friends, okay? Tommy told him that um, their friends could help them figure out who the ladies really are. And um, they'll help them pick up on whether or not, you know, they're doing the same old thing. Or they see that their friend has finally discovered love, okay? So Donovan said that his best friend was on the last season of Ready to Love. And that was interesting. Um, Y'all might have recognized him. Me, not so much since this is my first season ever watching. But anyway, so you know a couple of the guys was nervous about the ladies meeting, you know, their friends. Like Tori, he said his friend ain't got no filter, so he don't know what's going to come out of his mouth. And Paul flat out said that his friend was ratchet. And he <laughs> and he know he was gonna tell him to hook him up with you know whichever lady that he didn't pick. They're a mess, y'all. So anyway, uh, we gonna get into the first date, which happened to be Paul. Okay, Paul, Dakia, and unfortunately Carmen. So Paul friend uh, meets him down by the boats or whatever, and they getting ready to hang out with the ladies, or should I say, lady? Cause I don't really feel like calling Carmen a lady. But anyway. Paul trusts his friend Bill to give him some sound advice, you know, and he's ready. So Paul said that Tina was his top connection, but she's, you know, been evasive lately. So he gonna see what's up with Dakia and Carmen. So first comes Dakia, who says that Paul is a mystery to her because she didn't get to see the real Paul until recently. Um, she walks up and meet Paul and his friend. His friend tells her that he and Paul go way back to the um, POJ days. Y'all remember when Paul, uh, in the beginning, when Paul was going around telling the ladies that his name was P.O. And was about to get his ass kicked off the show. Because <laughs> then nobody know what he was talking about. They was tired of his ass. But anyway, so Paul explained to us where P.O. came from. So he said that it started in the fifth grade when he was um, rapping. And started uh, spitting out some shit like P.O. Gigolo. Some shit like that. And, you know, j he was a kid rapping. And he thought that the word Gigolo started with the letter J when it actually started with the letter uh, G. He probably would have known that had his little ass been paying attention in school instead of in class trying to rap. But anyway, that's where it came from. So the name kind of stuck with him. But anyway, Paul's friend uh, asked Akia what it was that she liked about Paul. And she said that she liked how um, he was supportive and protective. And she felt like he was going to make sure that she was all right. And also, uh, she said that, you know, she's the boss at work, but she don't want to be that at home. She want to be able to take that hat off and trust that her man going to have her. Okay. Now, Dakia also stated that she wanted someone she could um, take into different worlds with her, like to the cookout. And then also to um, parties at the embassy or whatever. So his friend started talking about um, how Dakia got all the points she needed on a point system. And she was like, because ain't no competition when the champ is here. And y'all, as soon as she said that, here comes Carmen, old cornbread fed ass walking up, walking down the stairs like she's somebody. OK, other than an insecure asshole looking to compete against a woman she feel threatened by. All right. So she comes strutting down the stairs with her fedora on, her jean jacket and tank top with her titties all hanging out per usual. And she walks up uh, to the table ready to give the key an upset stomach, y'all. So she walks up to the table and she meet them and she's in the confessionals talking about when she first got there, she was wondering uh, what the kid was doing there. And I was like, the real question is what the fuck are you doing here? You know what I'm saying? If you don't go get up on one of them damn boats and fall your ass off real quick, I can't stand her. So anyway, Carmen took off her sunglasses and there she go with them blue ass contacts again. The kid was like, I thought Clifton told her that that shit wasn't a good look. But I guess she didn't get the hint. Now, y'all, <laughs> I remember Clifton saying something in the confessionals about Carmen's contacts, but I didn't know that he said something about them, you know, to her face. <laughs> he wow. <laughs> anyway, y'all, Paul's friend had asked Carmen how long has she known uh, POJ? And she was like, I don't call him POJ. I call him Paul. And moving forward, <laughs> you, you will know him as Paul. And I was like, girl, you ain't going to last long enough to call him nothing. I got the feeling she going home soon. Now she done, you know, used her titties to try to stay here as long as she could. But 
she got to go. So anyway, Dakia told him that um, she had been knowing Paul for two weeks. And Dakia said that she and Paul are starting to um, know each other. And they've never been on a one-on-one date before. So, of course, Carmen going to say that, you know, that was interesting that um, Paul and uh, Dakia had never been out on a date before. And uh, she told Paul that a date with Dakia may be something to explore or not. <laughs> you know, like the unnecessary shit that she says. It's just annoying. And, you know, Dakia felt so too because she was in the confessionals. Like, why all the tension? You know, and she didn't know why Carmen was trying to compete with her. She said that all that bullshit was pretty much unnecessary because if she the one for Paul, Paul going to choose the best one for him. And instead of competing with her, you know, she said that Carmen should be choosing the one that's best for her and not the one that she feels is the easiest to get. And of course, you know, I'm with her on that shit. I'm sick of Carmen old Coco Melon head ass. She ain't shit but an insecure ass turd. But anyway... I was just thinking, you know, she ain't the woman for nobody and she know it, which is why she using her titties to make them feel differently. You know what I mean? She's not even interested in the guy. She just want to prove to herself that she can bag him if she wanted to. I guess outside of, you know, her titties, she feel like she going to mesmerize them with those old crusty crab blue ass contacts she had on. So anyway, the kid gets up and she leaves. Um, I guess it was time for her to go. <sighs> I know she had she had to have had enough of Carmen. You know, she probably wasn't even expecting to see her ass there. So, you know, once the kid leaves, Carmen going to say, you know what they say. You always say the best for last. And I was like, will you get your Rudy Ray Moore looking ass up out of here and let the last bitch come on through? Because you definitely ain't it, child. You definitely ain't the best. So it's like... <sighs> Then her lame ass going to say, get rid of the zero and get with a hero. I guess because she's been walking around with them unnatural ass, blue ass contacts on, she thinking she a hero. And that jean jacket she wearing around her fucking shoulders was supposed to be her cape. I was like, girl. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, what's the name of them damn birds that be grabbing people by the shirt collars and flying off with them? <laughs> Not the buzzard, because that would be Carmen. <laughs> Is it a stork? <laughs> I don't know. Whichever one can do it. I just want one to come through and carry her ass up out of there. Like, dear Carmen, I do not like you, bitch. Sincerely me. So anyway, Paul's friend had told Carmen that she seemed like she may have, uh, she may control her guys a little bit. And Carmen told him that, you know, she was competitive, which is where she believes her dominance comes off. But she says that she doesn't want to be like that all the time and feels like she's more submissive when she's uh, with Paul. Just because she took, you know, a bite from the man pickle don't mean she's submissive. But anyway, <sighs> Paul... Uh, let me see what else happened in these notes. Yeah, Paul said that um, Carmen is superficial when it comes to a lot of things. But he realizes that there's a little bit of substance. <laughs> Yo, he said he realizes that it was a little bit of substance there. He said a little bit. <laughs> and even then, he was very generous. <laughs> so anyway, Carmen gets up and leaves, all right? And Paul and his friend, they talk about the ladies and who will um, probably fit better into Paul's life. So Paul asked his friend which one of the ladies could he uh, see uh, Could he see him with. And he told Paul that both of the ladies had similar qualities. And, you know, he must have been talking about how Dakia and Carmen were both um, saying that they want their men to uh, lead pretty much because other than that, they are in no way similar. No way. Other than the fact that they both women. And that has yet to be determined when it comes to Carmen. So anyway, his friend told him that uh, he could see Paul with the Kia at home and with Carmen while out. So was he saying that the Kia don't seem like the type to want to go out and have fun? Or was he saying that he felt like Carmen was the one uh, he could see Paul flaunting around the city, you know, with since she liked to have her titties out and shit? I don't know. Anyway, his friend said that um, Carmen represents the old him while Dakia represents the new him, okay? <sighs> Paul know what's up for himself because he said that, you know, when it comes to Dakia, she's solid and he doesn't see any bends or twists with her. So, you know, that was the end of that day. And now we're going to move on to 
Tori, who set up a group date with Ace and Sabrina. Him and his friend, you know, they there waiting for the ladies to show up. So Tori said that his biggest connection is Sabrina, you know, as we all know. However, um, his friend Ace, um, Ash, his friend Ash that he brought along to meet the ladies, um, is a big bullshit detective. So he's confident that he'll help him sniff out the bullshit if there's any. And I thought that he was talking about in Sabrina. <laughs> but anyway, so Sabrina comes walking in, you know, with a gift for Tori and, um, Tori feel like the gift is sending mixed signals because he knows that him and Sabrina haven't been conversing lately like they used to. But on the other hand, he feels like someone isn't going to bring you a gift to waste their time. So he say. So anyway, Tori's friend is aware that Sabrina got out of a relationship not too long ago. Um, she was recently divorced or whatever. And um, he wanted to know if she has dated anybody else since then. And she told him that she has. And he asked her, how did it go? And she said, obviously, you know, it went well at first, but then not so well since she was there now looking for love. But once she was done, you know, dating that guy, she thought that it was important to get back out there and date again. Y'all, I just want to, you know, throw in there how Toy's friend reminds me of um, Bubba off of Forrest Gump when he was like blue shrimp, green shrimp, pepper shrimp, Massachusetts shrimp, horse shrimp, cockle doo doo shrimp. <laughs> I just want to throw that in there because I immediately thought of him. But anyway, Toy friend had asked Sabrina what she was looking for in a man. And she said um, pretty much a partner in crime. Somebody she could rely on, somebody who was loyal, and somebody, um, you know, who wouldn't give up on her or themselves. And also somebody she could, you know, could experience life with. So, Bubba was like, y'all, his name ain't Bubba, but he looked like him. So, <laughs> Toy's friend was like, uh, y'all look good together, but um, where's the other connection at? Meaning Ace. And Tori didn't know where Ace was, so he decided to call her right, right there. Um, y'all, Tori was looking high as shit in those confessionals. But anyway, um, he whipped out his phone and called Ace, but she didn't pick up. And Sabrina was like, that was strange. And she said that she's, um, never had a man call another woman on the phone while on a date with her. And I was like, girl, relax. There's a first time for everything. I'm sure Tori thought it was strange when, you know, she took her ass over there and nibbled on Demetrius ear which is probably why he gives no fucks about calling Ace in front of her ass. But anyway, Ace never answered. So he was basically stood up, all right? Toya said that he knows Ace and don't believe um, she would stand him up for no reason unless the connection that they had wasn't as strong as he thought it was. So anyway, Toya's friend um, continued with uh, asking Sabrina if she was um, ready to get back in and play play ball. And um, she was like, um, she is, but she wanted to make it very clear that she has no plans to rush into anything. She wanted to take it slow. Now, Tori said that um, he always questioned if she was ready to be with anybody on the journey, especially him. I don't think he always wondered that, you know, just after he got his feelings hurt, after she kissed and nibbled on Demetrius. So his friend asked him how he thought um, that him and Sabrina... Um, how he asked him how did he okay let me put this right Tori's friend asked Tori how did he think him and Sabrina was connecting at that moment and Tori said that um they were still figuring it out pretty much you know Sabrina is undecisive he feels as opposed to him he said he liked the qualities that Sabrina has and feel like um they would be a good team but she has to figure out what she wants and that's the part that scares him because he don't know if Sabrina is going to, you know, want to be with him once it's said and done. He said that the more he becomes distant, um, the more energy she uses to pull him back in. And he feels like uh, some of it is genuine, but most of it is just to keep him around. So, you know, that was it with their date. So his friend um, said that Sabrina compliments him very well, but she just got out of a relationship and he's not sure if she's ready to love or whatever. So he told Tori to proceed with caution. And Tori said that um, Ace's lack of communication threw him off. Um, he said that she could have just hit him up and told him that um, 
she wasn't going to be able to make it. And I agree. So, you know, he said that he didn't know if they were going to, um, if they were going to be able to move forward after that. So now it's time for Sabrina and Demetrius state. Okay. Demetrius have his Wayne man can there. And, you know, he said that they've been through a lot of things together. So he knows his friend knows what he wants and needs. And he would probably be probably be able to see things that he probably wouldn't be able to see. So, you know, Sabrina gets there and Demetrius says that, um, she's his top connection. Uh, but he knows that she has other top, a uh, top connection. So he want his friend to dig in and see where she's at, at least from his perspective. So Demetrius friend asks Sabrina where Demetrius fits in, in regards to the other guys that she's been out on dates with. And she told him that Demetrius has been in her top and still is. He then asked her what she um, brought to the table for Demetrius. And she said, um, a genuine partner that will support him and someone he could depend on. And then he asked her when her last relationship was. And I noticed that she didn't answer that. And probably because it wasn't that long ago. And probably because, um, you know, she feel like they're judging her whether or not she's ready to love uh, based off of that. So, you know, instead she just told him that um, she told him the amount of time that she was in a relationship, which was um, seven years. So he asked Sabrina if she had any questions for him. And she did. And she asked him, what type of girl does he think would be good for Demetrius? And uh, he was like, well, someone who's submissive. And Sabrina was pretty much, well, you know, like, you got the wrong bitch because I'm not submissive. I have a hard time following. So Demetrius was in a confessional talking about how um, he was like, he know the word submissive can be how it can be to a lot of women. Okay. So he said that that may be sort of a red flag, but not big enough for him to stop talking to her. And here's what I want to say about what he just stated. I feel like a lot of women have a problem with being submissive because a lot of guys want to leave, but don't know where the fuck they going. Ain't no woman in her right mind going to let you lead her to shit. You know what I mean? A lot of these guys just want to be in control and don't know the first thing about being a leader. Some women, in my opinion, wouldn't mind sitting back and letting that man you know, take the wheel. But in order for that to happen, I feel like there has to be trust there. She has to trust you to lead her in the relationship. And sadly, a lot of these guys can't be trusted. And that's just my opinion. But anyway, Sabrina said that she was um, a very independent person and feel like she needs to lead and be in charge of her own life. She said that, um, she said the word submissive is foreign to her. So, you know, she's nervous about her and Demetrius now because they both are strong people. So she thinks that's going to be a problem. You know, um, now knowing this, she probably going to head back over towards Tori. That's what I was thinking. Or maybe not because um, Donovan, you know, still around. So I don't know. His friend talking about um, Demetrius. um being submissive may not be something she's used to or wanted to hear, but that's how he is. And I was like, you know, that's exactly why Demetrius is going to probably uh, leave there by himself because it's a no-go. And also Tina um, was one of his connections and she damn sure don't give off any vibes to make me think that she would be, you know, submitting to anybody, especially after her baby daddy then dogged her out. So, you know, so she say. So now, y'all, let's talk about Clifton's date with Dakia and Joy. So Clifton got his friend Kenny there with him to meet the ladies, okay? Clifton said that he um, has a connection with Joy, but he also had one with Dakia, and it's been growing. He told his friend that him and Joy has been connecting since day one, and the energy is um, phenomenal, okay? Joy, in my opinion, an already bad Clifton because she over there talking about she feel like she need to call Clifton friend, brother, OK, but, you know, she got to watch out because now that Eric is gone, the Kia may be a little more intentional as they, you know, always saying with Clifton, the Kia's um, into Paul, too. But, you know, she might just want to let that go just so she don't have to deal with Carmen because Carmen is sickening. But anyway, so the Kia comes walking in and she. um had with her some kind of drink and what looked like a um seashell uh cup or something 
uh, which they all thought looked like a vagina. But anyway, Joya said that it was nice to see Dakia. And I think that's because she ain't worried yet. You know, she thinks she got clipped in, in the bag. So they had some kind of dish that included olives in it and Clifton said that he didn't like olives so Dakia told uh, him that he made her eat something that she didn't like which was oysters I think but anyway she said that he made her eat something she didn't like so maybe he needed to try whatever it was on a table that he didn't like so Dakia got up and went over to feed Clifton whatever it was and you know Joy was in a confession was like go ahead honey he liked to eat he a big man so she wasn't worried about the kid you know what the kid was doing because like I said she don't think the kid's connection with Clifton comes close to the one that she has with him so Clifton's friend asked Joy what was it about Clifton that she noticed and Joy was like how can you not notice him next to everybody else? But she loved the fact that he was him. He ain't never switch it up. And his friend asked Joy if she could handle that because that was who he really was. And of course, you know, she said, hell yeah. Then his friend asked the kid what she thought was the best quality, what she thought was the best quality of Clifton. And she said that um, for her, it was, um, uh, the balance between the fun and the seriousness. She said that um, they can have an intellectual conversation and still laugh about anything. So um, his friend said that Clifton was 100% all the time. Uh, who they see is pretty much who he is all the time. And a lot of people can't handle that. The raw, uncut, and unfiltered everything pretty much. Joy said that um, she and Clifton has had chemistry from the beginning, but she don't feel that Dakia is intimidated by anybody. And if she is, you know, in my opinion, she sure ain't showing it. However, uh, she do hope that Dakia is now a bit more aware of her connection with Clifton and back off. Now, when it comes to Dakia, I feel like she came to play the game how it was supposed to be played. Um, she came and showed her true genuine self. And it's like she going to let whatever supposed to happen, happen. Because like, you know, like she said at the meetup with Paul and Carmen, those guys going to pick the best one for them. So, you know, she ain't out here doing all the extra shit that insecure bitches like Carmen do. And the key of not showing that she's intimidated by anyone is another reason, in my opinion, why Carmen don't like her. Because all the other ladies, you know, they get along with the kid just fine. Carmen thought that she was about to come in and intimidate people with her titties and blue contacts and slick ass mouth. And it wasn't that kind of party. Those ladies not paying Carmen no mind because they know she ain't no threat. The only person who think Carmen is a threat is Carmen. And really, even she knows she ain't no threat. I mean, she talk a good game, but she know what it is. So, y'all, anyway, Clifton tried it after Joy left because she had to get up and go. Um, remember that drink that the kid walked in with and they said that it was in a something shaped like a vagina? So Clifton picked that container up and said, I was just wondering if I could taste your vagina. And the kid was like, you know, the kid being just as silly as Clifton is, told him to just let her know when. And Clifton friend said that he was just going to turn his head while Clifton did that. Just silly, y'all. So anyway, it was time for uh, Dakia to leave now. And she asked Clifton's friend if she had passed the test. And he said that she did. Now, Dakia said that, you know, she knows that Cliff has a strong connection with Joy and that um, Joy is already um, head over heels for him. But she says that Clifton is still trying to figure his shit out, which makes him fair game. OK, so Dakia left and Clifton was left talking to his friend. He was telling him that, you know, he has a connection with Joy, but Dakia is a great woman. So it's hard to it's hard trying to decide between the two. And his friend said that they both had great answers to his questions. And while Dakia seemed like a great person, he just got a better vibe from Joy. He got more personality from Joy and think that she'll be a better fit for Clifton. Um, Clifton was talking about how his personality is and how um, he's naturally a loud person and was wondering if Dakia would be able to handle that. Shit, if she not, if she can't, I know Joy would because she just as loud in my opinion. However, you know, Clifton want to explore all of his options properly because even though he want a woman like himself, mean and Joy, he can't deny the connection that he and Dakia have. All right. So, and then, um, you know, 
Y'all, his silly ass, he started sipping from that damn bowl again, talking about he was going to take the vagina to go. Just so damn silly. So that was day date, y'all. So now we're going to move on over to Donovan, okay? Um, Donovan brought along his friend Phil, who he said was on last season, the last season of um, Ray to Love, and he found his person. So, y'all, Sabrina, um, she pretty busy this episode. Here she is on another date. So, you know, Sabrina gets there to meet up with Donovan, and then comes Tina, okay? So, Donovan introduces uh, Tina and Sabrina to his friend. And his friend said that since he had already been through the process, he got his questions together that he wanted to ask the ladies. So, he asked Tina how many connections did she have, and, you know, she didn't want to tell him that, but she told him that he was, um, Donovan was in her top. And no, what happened was he asked Tina, uh, I believe he asked her how many connections did she have and where did Donovan fit in that? I believe that's what she asked him, but she didn't really want to answer that. So she just said that Donovan was in her top or whatever. Then Sabrina jumped in and said that she had a couple of connections, but Donovan had leaped over all of them. So next, his friend asked Tina, what did she like most about Donovan? And she said that she likes that he's really kind. And when she was having a bad week, he understood that she just needed some space, something that um, she said some people don't understand about her. I think Tina liked to disappear, y'all. And, and, you know, that's going to make them think that she's not ready to love. Just, you know, in my opinion. Sabrina said that. Uh, she likes that he makes her smile and that uh, when they're together, their conversation just flows freely. So Donovan, he looks over at Tina and asks her if she was going to eat. And she said that she had already eaten. She can tell she um, was someplace else, okay? Because she was looking like she didn't want to be there or, you know, just wasn't interested. And, you know, if she knew that they were going out to dinner or lunch, why would she eat before she got there? Unless she was afraid that they would shit try to make her pay, pay the bill. You know what I'm saying? And she could say, I ain't eat shit when the bill come through. Or maybe she just felt like she was going to be too nervous to eat on a date. I don't know. It's just like, you know, just like Donovan said, you never know what you're going to get with Christina. But anyway, I think the process is um, overwhelming for her because she said that trying to date four or five guys at one time was easier said than done. But, you know, it's like, didn't she know what she would be doing before she signed up for? Or, you know, maybe, well, maybe she just thought she could handle it. But now that she's in it, it's too much for her. I don't know. So anyway, y'all, Donovan's friend asked Sabrina if she had kids. We know she don't, but she said that she wanted one or two, a boy for sure. And, you know, she asked him if um, he thought Donovan was ready to love, okay? Um, of course, he's going to say yes, even if he wasn't. But anyway, he said that he's seen some, some of Donovan's highest and lowest moments. And he was like, you want somebody who can rise above the tribulations of life. So I guess now that Donovan has risen above those tribulations, he's ready to love. He feels like Donovan is ready to love. So anyway, um, y'all, Tina asked, she was sitting over there looking like, you know, is this date going to be over soon? She was just acting like she was just not into it. So Sabrina says that, you know, Donovan is giving her vibes that he's still finding himself. But... <laughs> She's one to talk when it seems like she's flip-flopping every other day. She was recently divorced just like Donovan. So, you know, if she going to base it off that and the fact that he done been through some low points in his life, as we all do, then, you know, it's like, girl, stop. So, y'all, anyway, it was time for the ladies to leave, okay? Um, And that was that. Donovan valued his friend's thoughts or whatever, and he wanted his friend to tell him his opinion about both the ladies. So his friend thought that Sabrina was cool and came in with nice energy and she seemed genuine over, you know, overall happy to be there. However, some of the answers that she gave to his questions seem a little bit too perfect. OK. One of the concerns that Donovan had about Sabrina is the fact that she wants a family and he already has two kids. However, he said that if more kids is what his wife would want, he would consider it. OK. Now, when it comes to Tina, 
His friend said that she seemed like a good fit as well, but she didn't give him the directness of letting him know that she was there or whatever. Um, Donovan's biggest concern about Tina is that she has a two-year-old child and also a career. So he was wondering where he would fit into that. And just like I was feeling during the date, she seemed not to really care and was disengaged. So he was wondering if she had the bandwidth to handle all of it. Um, his friend suggested that he be selfish. Okay. Something that Donovan says that he's not, but you know, so I guess he about to start ruling people out based on if they seem to meet his needs in life or whatever. So now y'all it's the Kia and Paul, they're out on a date. And the Kia said that Paul checks a lot of her boxes, but she feels like she may need a little more oomph. Okay. So she needs that spark to get started. And I guess it hasn't yet for them. So she's on their date to see if it happens. So the kid asked him, what was he looking for in a woman? And Paul said that he didn't want to say look. So she asked him, what was it that he wanted and needed in a woman? So Paul said that those were two different things. So he was going to break it down for her. I felt like he was being a little difficult. He knew what she meant. That just made me feel like, you know, wasn't nothing going to really go on between those two. But anyway, um, when he called himself breaking it down, he said that needing is somebody. He, what he needs is someone that compliments his life. Somebody that brings out the positive and not the complications. Somebody who is simplistic in their ways, but at the same time, intricate enough to be interesting. OK, shit. He sounded like he was being complicated right there. But anyway. When it comes to what Paul wants, Paul wants someone who's about 5'3", like the kid, because he pretty much said that anyone taller would be snatching the covers up off of him in bed. Also, he wanted someone who um, could take his sense of humor because his sense of humor is quite different. You don't say. So anyway, Paul is aware that his jokes be corny as shit, but he wants someone who can deal with him. So the kid being the kid said that she wanted to see his sense of humor because she loved a corny joke. So Paul goes ahead and tells her a corny joke. And it went like this. <laughs> he said, what did one coffin say to the other coffin? And she was like, what? And then Paul said, is that you coughing? <laughs> and I was like, Paul, <laughs> you don't get your ass out of here. So y'all, that was it with them. All right. Let's see what happened. Yeah, Paul is here, 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 cornball, but he kind of smooth though. And the kid, you know, she she laughed at his joke or whatever. She was like, "Now, Paul, so maybe she can take the kind of person that Paul is." Uh, the kid seems like someone who can pretty much go with the flow, or you know, I don't know. She just seemed like she can adjust to. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I don't know. But anyway, y'all, um, let's see. Dakia had asked him to tell her something that he hadn't told anybody else in the process. So Paul said that um, he paints and I found that to be interesting. So, you know, he's an artist. He said that he do sketches and he bring those to life. And Dakia found that to be interesting as well. And, you know, she had no idea that he was such a creative person. So she figured that maybe he wasn't as one dimensional as she thought that he was and that the fire she was looking for, you know, maybe getting a little bigger. However, I doubt it, but hey, anything can happen, I guess. So anyway, both of them are down for having another date soon and they toasted to potential. Maybe on the next date, he'll show her some, you know, some of his paintings or, you know, take her to an art gallery or something. Just a thought. So y'all, now Ace and Tori have met up, okay? He said that um, she left him confused when she did a no-show the other day. Now, when um, Ace didn't show up for that date, I just figured that she done went and started an off-camera thing with Laverne, like um, they had talked about. Now, I don't know if Laverne was just pretending to be so into Ace so he could win, but I remember them talking about having um, Christmas together and stuff. So, But anyway... Tori and Ace had sat down to talk. So Ace came up in there with a big smile and Tori mentioned, um, Tori mentioned 
thinking that it was about the smile was for him. But just like with other shit, he was sadly mistaken because they said she got to smile and keep that positive energy flowing. OK, so, you know, they toasted to great smiles and then um, got to talking about that date that Ace didn't show up for. So Tori told her um, how he was expecting to expecting her to be there and how disappointed he was because they have a connection and ace told him that her not showing up was not a slight to his awesomeness and she apologized and told him that she was just gonna keep it 100 with him and she told him that when she see the way that he vibe with and look at sabrina she see what he feel for her and think it's beautiful because you know that's how a man is supposed to look at his woman she thought that it was best that they just put everything out on the table in the confessionals um she said that if she had if she had showed up to that date to meet him and his friend, that would have sent the message that she was interested in deepening the relationship beyond a friendship level. And she wasn't okay. Um, even still, she could have called and let him know that she wasn't coming instead of not showing up. I feel like, um, you know, how Tori feel about Sabrina, uh, may have had a little to do with her not showing up, but I think she was, um, yeah, she was messing around with Laverne off camera. I'm just going to put it like that. Okay. Um, so anyway, um, what else happened? Yeah. And, and then she said that, um, she had started to connect very romantically with someone else, which is why she was pulling herself out of the, um, ready to love journey. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead on and say, yeah, she was messing around with Laverne because she was in an interview. OK. And I don't have the exact words in front of me. So uh, but from the top of my head, she said that um, she did pursue something with Laverne, but she said it. they're just friends. It. Long story short, it didn't work out. Um, I wanted to be thorough when I gave that to y'all, but, um, yeah, I'm going to leave that link, uh, right up under the video. So y'all can take a look at her interview if y'all want to. Um, yeah. So let's see. So anyway, Ace told him that she was going to be pulling herself up out of the, um, the, the journey. Okay. Let's see. Now, of course, Tori didn't want her to go, but you know, if that was her choice, he said that he had to respect it. He actually wanted to uh, beg her to stay, he said. Um, and that was probably because he knew Sabrina old flip floppy ass was, you know, about to do away with his ass. But then again, maybe not because she's feeling uh, different about Demetrius now that she knows that he wants a submissive woman, something she's not. And, you know, she said that um, Donovan is coming off as someone who's still finding himself. So that leaves Tori. So I don't know how that's going to go. But anyway, Tori said that it may be a little of his fault because he was so tunnel vision. And sometimes, you know, you just don't see what's in front of you until it's not there anymore. And he told Ace that he cared for her and um, honestly didn't want her to go, but he couldn't be selfish. But um, he let her know that if she needed anything, he was going to be there for her. And I thought that was sweet. So they hugged it out and she told him that she appreciated him. And that was that. So, um, she said that, you know, she met some great people throughout her journey there and was now open and vulnerable to her future. No further mentions of, um, Laverne, but like I said in the interview, you know, she said that she pursued that and it didn't work out, but they're friends. Um, she didn't say that on the show, but she said that in an interview. Okay. Um, Let's see. Yeah, that's it with that. So now it's time for the guys to meet up with Tommy, okay, for um, their deliberation. So, so Paul said that he hated deliberation because um, he knew that they had to let one of the ladies go. He came in with his shirt crease up this time, y'all, because um, last time Tommy was talking shit about his shirt being wrinkled. But anyway, they started talking about how um, it went and having their friends meet the ladies, okay? So Donovan went first and said that his friend thought that Tina was very beautiful and she looked very nice. Then, y'all, he said that Tina came in with an all-white cat suit. And I was like, maybe he was talking about another Tina because the one he went out on a date with ain't having no damn cat suit. She was 
in a like a white blouse and a pair of white slacks pants. A cat suit would be considered that thing Joy had on that day that Tori told her that he wanted to touch her kidneys. Something seeing a woman in a cat suit make you want to do, I guess. But anyway, out of Sabrina and Tina, his friend liked Sabrina a lot and felt like she was really compatible with him and felt like she could have a future with him. Demetrius said that his date went well with his friend. Um, his friend asked tough questions and his friend felt like him and Sabrina was a perfect fit looking from the outside in and the energy just oozes off of them. Now moving on to Clifford, Tommy asked him how comfortable was he with two women at the same time and Clifton said that um, he was very comfortable. He said that his friend um, picked Joy because he knows his energy and I guess Joy matched it. However, he said that he can't say anything bad about the kid because they had a connection from day one and she was his first date. So he can see a romantic connection with both Joy and the kid. Now, Paul, Paul said that his friend said that if he wants a woman, uh, what did he say? Yeah, he said his friend said that if he wants a woman, the Paul person wants a woman, go with the Kia. But if POJ wants a woman, go with Carmen. Okay, um, so Tommy was like, I don't know who the fuck POJ is, never hung out with him. And Paul told him, you know, he had to, he had to hang out with him one day. But Tommy was like, he was scared. <laughs> So then Tommy was like, here's a question. Which one of those two ladies do you think can handle a little bit of both, Paul and POJ? So, you know, Paul didn't know. He didn't have an answer right then. But Paul going to think on that and use that to help him make his decision between the two ladies, I guess. I think it would be the Kia, though. So Tori, Tori said that his friend Ash was wild about Sabrina. But as far as Ace, she didn't show up. And Tommy was like, did she call? And he was like, nope, uh, no text, no nothing. He told him that um, he was able to set up another date with Ace once she did sh uh, show up, you know, and they talked. Uh, she said that she would be dismissing, her dismissing herself from the journey because their friendship had become solely a friendship. Now, in that interview, I remember um, Ace saying that she, the day that Laverne was sent home, she had sent an email or something to production letting them know that she was leaving. So she didn't understand why Tommy didn't know that she was leaving. I just thought I would throw that in there. All right. Um, so anyway, let's see. So he, uh, Tommy told the rest of the guys that if that happened to him, some, if somebody dismissed himself or whatever, or don't show up for a date or whatever happened, he asked them to give him a call. So he wished Ace the best. And, uh, that was pretty much it with that. Oh yeah. Um, Tommy had, um, asked him where did, um, that leave him with who he connected with. So Tori said that he and Sabrina have a connection, but he's not sure of it right now. Um, the vibe that he gets from Sabrina is that he's a compliment and not a requirement. So next, Tommy wanted them um, to talk about who they felt weren't ready to love and why. So Tori said that he didn't want to say Carmen, but They've only had phone conversations. Um, he wanted to get to know her, though, but it just hasn't happened. And shockingly, Donovan uh, spoke a few positive words about Carmen. He told Tori that um, Carmen was real. And I was like, he can't be talking about her eyes, that's for sure. And I was curious to know, like, real in what way? Real insecure, real asshole real full of shit. But anyway, Donovan said that she was real. And what you see is what you get. She ain't changing. And he don't think that um, he wanted her to change. And y'all, I had to think for a minute because I, I I like almost forgot that he even went out with Carmen. Like he was in her top connections. I forgot. Uh, but anyway, Carmen is at the bottom. All right. So let's see what else. Demetrius said that he really couldn't say yay or nay yet. Because he haven't had a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with her yet. But um, he would say to Kia, he said, they talk, but they don't have a romantic connection. 
And Paul was like, I'm sorry, brother, my connections are limited, okay? And you ain't about to send one of them home. So he said, I'm interested in Dakia. I just had my first date with her and I really want to get to know more about her, okay? And Clifton had told Paul, good luck. <laughs> but anyway, Tori said that um, his least connection was Christina. Um, it just isn't there with them. And Clifton said Christina as well. He said they still talk, but it's not the same energy that they had. And let's see. Yeah, Paul was like, who, who, no, Tori was like, um, you know, if somebody like you or care for you, and if you're not sure, you're not 100%, pretty much, you know, it is what it is. And Clifton said that his other least connection would be Sabrina because they're just friends. And then Paul said that he and Sabrina needs a reset. But Sabrina made it up in her mind that she didn't see it for Paul. And she did that early on. And Donovan said, um, Donovan said it would be joy for him. And that's only because he haven't been out on a date with joy yet. So now that they've all given an account of who their, uh, weakest connections are, Tommy, um, said that, you know, that was the most that he had heard out of them about the ladies. Then, um, Aston left and didn't say shit. So he think, so, um, he was like, um, I don't know why he thought that though. I don't know why he didn't, uh, find out that Ace didn't, uh, leave. I don't know. But anyway, he was acting like it was a lot to take in. So he wondered if they should hold off on getting rid of one of the ladies, uh, that week. And he asked the guys if they felt like they needed more time to decide. And, you know, um, I guess he could have given them more time since Ace had left. But then again, when Eric dismissed himself, they still had to get rid of a guy that week. Uh, right? I think. Yeah, I think that was the week that Laverne ended up going home. But anyway, Tommy said that he was going to give them more time so that they could make that, make the right decision. All right. Um, and he told them about the next curveball, which was the fact that he was about to send them on a weekend getaway with the ladies. So, y'all, that was it for that episode, okay? Um, that was my review. So, y'all can head on over to my review of the latest uh, episode of Ready to Love, all right? Um, where we're going to talk about the getaway that Tommy sent them on. So, I'll chat with y'all over there.